Hey everybody, I want to do a little talk today about some knives and uh, some different things here. Um, this is a Coleman Knife Western Series uh, produced in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, this is like one of the first hunting knives that I, I purchased for myself. It's got a little drop point blade. I guess it's a drop point, I don't know my blades that much. Um, but it's thin, it's balanced. I've used it on a lot of game over the years. Uh, pretty good little workhorse, good for fine tasks, holds a good edge, and it's um, a carbon steel blade. As you can see, it's got a patina on it. Old leather case. It's had lots and lots of use. And I still had carried this as a belt knife for a, a long time. Uh, it's got plastic handles, you know. It was a, a fairly cheap knife. It was under $20 when I bought it. <clears throat> was at a gun show six, seven years after that, and I saw this knife, and it was like 10 bucks. And it's another uh, Coleman Knife Western Series. A stainless steel blade. Fits really well in the hand. It's got a real nice handle. I mean, it, it holds really good. Uh, processing meat. This knife does excellent job of uh, deboning meat off of, you know, like deer hide or deer. Um, really nice. It holds an edge pretty good. It is a stainless steel blade. Um, it's got a, a decent little sheath. I've carried this knife for a long time. Um, would still carry that hunt and would use this more for processing stuff later back at the camp. Um, and this was my carry knife all the time going camping. Going camping um, out in the woods. And, and I love it because it, it did a lot. I was processing some, some small firewood, some kindling one day. And I was batoning it. And sure as, I don't know what, about, I don't know, did it many, many, many times. I tried to take a piece on. That was a little too big. And I snapped the blade right here. Snapped it right out. It is a full tang. This knife is a full tang also. Which means that the blade goes all the way through into the handle. As you can see, actually, this one stops right here. It's not quite truly a full tang. Um, you can see it on both sides. This one is truly a full tang. goes all the way through. But I snapped it. Um, it bothered me a little bit. I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. Um, I was able to use some MA300, which is a two-part epoxy. Uh, super strength. It's great for bonding wood and metal. And I was able to epoxy it back together. Needless to say, this is no longer my camping knife. It, I pretty much do keep it around for um, deboning venison to make um, my grind and stuff. So I still use it for some meat processing. But it's not going to handle any more heavy duty stuff. So, um, after searching and searching and searching decide to get another knife. Well, during that time frame, while waiting for it, I got a knife and I decided I was going to play with it a little bit. I actually bought the blade blank myself, made the handles for it. It's a piece of red oak, stained it, playing with uh, some different patina options, using mustard, um, this is basically a guinea pig knife. Made a leather sheath for it. This knife holds a pretty good edge. Um, this is basically just a knife I keep in my truck. For cutting cordage. Um, just little tasks here and there. Uh, not a big deal. <clears throat> well... This is what I got. This is a custom-made knife. 
for me by Blind Horse Knives. Well, it's a style of their knife that is handmade that I ordered um, from Blind Horse Knives. It's called the GNS GNS. Comes with a dangler sheath, all leather, and in some of this later on in this video or in a second part, I haven't decided what. I'm, I'm going to show you how I'm going to wet form this and then I'm going to treat it. <clears throat> all, these, all these cases here have been treated with snow seal wax. Um, really good stuff. Been using it on leather for a long time. Long time. From the sorrel boots on up to other things. Really good stuff. But I think this one I'm going to use this. This is a cake of beeswax and um, what do you call it? Uh, rendered fat tallow. Tallow, that's what you call it. So it's a combination of beeswax and tallow. And I think I'm going to try using that to condition this sheath after I wet form it. And I'm going to show you the process of wet forming, I think, on this too. Now to the knife. As you can see, there's their logo, Blind Horse Knife. <clears throat> it's a very hefty knife. It is 01 tool steel, carbon blade. It's got a real good grip. It's got my Carter scales on it. You can see full tang. It's got a really, really sharp spine, which means it'll be really good for lighting a ferro rod. That was always one drawback with this knife. It's got a little bit of a spine, but it's not real sharp. And this one's completely rounded. This one you couldn't, it, it didn't strike a, a ferro rod well at all. This one did pretty good. Um, it was fairly sharp, not too bad. As you can see, my cases have been well used and abused over the years, so this one would be the same. But this has got the um, Blind Horse logo on it and the Self Reliance logo, because this is this was a special that they did. Blade wise, you can see it's almost the same length as my favorite blade and pretty close to the same width. A uh, little bit different shape on the point on there. Uh, this has got a saber grind on it and it's sharp. It is real sharp. It's got a good balance on it. I think you can do some good carving with it. And um, Dave Canterbury from the, the Pathfinder School uh, he was beating the tar fire out of this processing wood, batoning it in the whole nine yards. And that's one of the things that made me decide to get it. If he can beat it up, and, and several other people have beat it up too, that, and is able to hold it, like I said, that's where this knife failed. But, I mean, like I said, it was a $10 knife. So, I decided to go and get this. It's not common, man. It definitely costs a a good chunk of change. It's got a lanyard hole in it. So I'm going to put some paracord on there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the OD green or maybe go with an orange or something a little bit subtle or something bright. I haven't decided yet on that. It's a very stiff case. I mean, it's in there. It's in there pretty good. I mean, you can see I'm shaking it, and the knife is just, it sits in there well. The other thing is, as far down as it sits in there, a little bit of a lanyard on the back would make it pull out a lot easier when you're reaching for it on your side. I mean, it's in there pretty stiff. But I still think I want to wet form it to um, soften it up a little bit and give it a real good look so it'll be textured more. 
It's a dangler sheet. I'm taking this piece off. I have no desire for it. And it has a little eye screw on it, so it, it'll come off easily. I don't like the dangler sheath. Um, so this will be just a straight standard belt sheath on it. So that's the, the first part. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, a little bit of my progression of knives and my quick down and dirty play toy, I guess you could really call it. it it's handy. Like I said, I keep it in the back of the truck. It cuts cordage and it cuts cordage well. Um, but it's my guinea pig knife. This is George with GFE Survival. I thank you for watching my videos and um, subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, I enjoy learning and subscribing to other channels. And I hope that people uh, like learning from mine and will do the same. Thank you. Okay, so after reading the paperwork that came with the knife, um, I don't think I'm going to actually wet form this case. I think what I'm going to do is just heat it up and rub in the um, the tallow beeswax mixture I have and, and soak that into the wood. Um, Line horse knives suggest snow seal, and I have snow seal, but I decided I'd rather use something I made myself, something that I have that I carry on hand pretty readily. As you can see, it's wrapped up in newspaper, and I have it. So it's going to get a little loud, but what we're going to do is going to heat this up with the blow dryer, uh, rub this in, and then heat up again, and the leather should soak it in. And it should soften this up. This is pretty stiff right now. And um, it's going to darken it, of course. And softening it up should allow me to form it more towards the knife and make it a little bit more user-friendly on there. This is the paracord that I'm going to use to make my lanyard with. Um, I think it's kind of a, a good blend of the gold kind of accent. And it's um, got a little camo to it, kind of a, a woody, earthen kind of tone. So I think it'll it'll blend well with it and kind of just give it a little bit more, like I said, character to myself. So let's go ahead and get started and heat this up and see how it does. Oh, no power.
see that leather's really dry. It is just soaking it up. Just soaking it up. Make sure that when you do it, that you get the whole edges and everything. So you kind of have the idea of what I'm doing. Heating it up, putting wax on, melting it in, and then heating it up and letting it absorb. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and continue this, and when I'm done, I'm going to do the back and stuff, and when I'm done, we'll go ahead and come back and show you what the final product is. As you can see, it has darkened up quite a bit. It's gone kind of from a red or a mahogany kind of a color to a brown. And shines up pretty nice. It's got four coats on each side that's worked in. And I worked it in here and underneath also and then around on the edge. And as you can see now, it's a little more definition here. Before it was just kind of rounded, you know, tapered. You can see now it's got more of an indention here. You see a little bit more of the knife shape. And it was a really hard shake and it came out. But a regular shaking, it's not coming out. But I mean, if you slam it, it's coming out. But normal wear and tear, normal use, it's not coming out. And it's still drying or curing a little bit, so I can still form it down a little bit more around the handle. So that's pretty much it. There will be some uh, videos coming down the line of uh, me using this, and uh, I'll do a review later on. And like I said, this is the GNS. Stands for Go No Show. Made by Blind Horse Knives. Carbon Steel 01 Tool Steel. Self Reliance Illustrated Special Edition. Micarta Scales. we go. If you haven't heard of Blind Horse Knives, I suggest you check them out. They have a Facebook page. Also, a um, bunch of YouTube videos. They make the Pathfinder's Knife for Dave Canterbury. The PLSA, PLSA K1 and 2. So I check it out. 